my of my of my office. Thank you all for for joining this uh, this meeting. My deep appreciation to every Ambazonian who is listening on Ground Zero and uh, those in exile in the diaspora. I have a couple of things to talk about, but I would like to respond to Mr. Samuel Komesako on his attack on the Ambazonia Biafra Alliance uh, using our refugees as an excuse. Let me say the following. Those who liberated Rwanda came in from refugee camps from Uganda. When Museveni was fighting against you know, the Idi Amin regime, they all came from refugee camps. During the period of the Kosovo liberation from Yugoslavia, I was in a refugee come with thousands of Kosovars who came together to be able to uh, mobilize resources for the liberation of Kosovo. Refugees have played an important role in, in, in liberation struggles, and they should never be, be treated as victims, that they should be used up as political pawns to be politicized by desperate politicians who pass around for, 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 for liberation leaders. Refugees are important instruments in shaping the future country in which they want to live. Our refugees in Nigeria have been politicized. Our prisoners have been politicized. They have used food as the CPDM used bags of rice and oil to bribe citizens to vote for them. <laughs> This is not how you liberate a country. This must be made clear. The alliance with Biafra is unstoppable. Unstoppable. It is not an alliance against Nigeria. It is it's an alliance for Ambazonia and for Biafra. Those who think Nigeria stands with us must remember that more than 42 Ambazonians were taken away in the north of Nigeria and deported into Yaoundé. That seven of our men, finest men, were picked up in Calabar and deported to Yaoundé. That the same person that somewhere Ikome Sako inherited his role was kidnapped from the Nera Hotel and renditioned to Yaoundé. Nigeria has shown itself not to be our friend. And we will not sit back and be afraid to make friends because it is going to anger some, some bullies within the continent. The continent of Africa, the contours of the continent of Africa, the concept of the statehood in the continent of Africa has not favored the Africans. It has favored managers who have hijacked states and turn it into political plantations where they have murdered people in nations fighting for self-determination. They have looted treasuries of countries. They have exploited resources and marketed them to multinationals without reciprocating in development. The alliance with Biafra is for the survival and self-preservation of Ambazonia. As we speak, 
in the past five years, Amazonians live in Biafra land. Everything we have gotten in terms of the defense of our humanity and our land has come from Biafra. And lest we forget, when we walk out of the Eastern House of Assembly, no shot was fired. Any attempt to walk out from Yaoundé, more than 30,000 of our people have been killed. Somewhere, Komesako and others must realize this. They have engaged in discussions with Biafra. Mr. Samuel Komesako has met with Namdi Kanu in a hotel in New York. I have the facts. Mr. Samuel Komesako has demanded funding from Biafra. But the Biafrans then realized he was not a serious candidate for a liberation struggle. Because he was interested in money. And that's why they turned to the Amazonian Governing Council to establish an alliance that works for both Biafra and for Amazonia. In establishing this alliance, I made wide ranging consultations with stakeholders of our liberation struggle, explaining to them the economic relevance of this alliance, the defense and security relevance of this alliance. This is the most important alliance for us. In the struggle between Ethiopia and Eritrea, once Eritrea realized Somalia was back in Ethiopia, they worked hard to disentangle Somaliland from Somalia as a punitive measure against Somalia. In liberation struggles, strategic alliances are critical to undermine alliances that stand against the objective of your struggle. Amazonians must know I will not enter into any alliance for political conveniences. I will not enter into any alliance for money. Any alliance that we have entered into are strategic in nature. Whether it was discussing with the Basque, we tap into their experience in their own struggle for self-determination. Whether it's reaching out to Somaliland, we tap into their experience a self, as a self-governing entity that has not been recognized and what lessons we can learn as we seek for international recognition. All these alliances that we seek to establish is to learn lessons on how we should avoid the obstacles that these countries have gone through. Why did Biafra fail in 1967? It's critical for Ambazonia's success tomorrow. And that is why the strategy we have developed is to ensure that one, we do not end up as a chaotic South Sudan. We do not fail as Biafra. We have to understand secondly, if we need to decouple the link between Ambazonia and Cameroon, where then do we trade? There are thousands and thousands of Biafrans in Ambazonia doing business. We could market our goods into Biafra, our fuel, comes from there. Most of our secondhand goods come from there. Those who have struggled to send containers into the Douala port have been duped, have been exploited and extorted. What is the alternative? It is not Asorok, it's Enigu. We do not seek this alliance against Nigeria. We seek this alliance for us, for the self-preservation of Amazonia. And we will establish alliances going forward that works for the Amazonian interests. We do not really care who it angers, especially those who have kidnapped our refugees, attack our own exiles, rendition them to Cameroon, subjected them to torture, as far as our refugees are concerned. I care about our refugees. I am a refugee. 
I have lived in a refugee camp for three years. Living in, an, living in a room, seven of us, for three straight years. No right to work, no right to anything, to education or to learn the language. When Akwanga was rescued from Kondengi, I flew into Biafra land two months later. I then flew into Brussels and appealed to the Belgian government to facilitate Akwanga's movement from Nigeria. They accepted if it was Akwanga alone, but there were 37 of them. And we said, no, everyone has to leave. Instead of these people working with the United Nations Human Rights and Refugee uh, 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 Commission to ensure that these refugees who are in squalor, who are suffering, can further immigrate like we move more than 40 Ambazonians with Akwanga from Nigeria. They are flying there with food to exploit them as political toys for their own legitimacy, as though they were camp. For elections. I sent an emissary into Nigeria, who then moved into Biafra to be able to support these refugees. That emissary was attacked because the, the refugees had been divided between Seseko and Sako. My strategy for these refugees are twofold. Like the old refugee I spoke to today in the refugee camp in Nigeria, is to ensure that we can move them out into different countries, like Norway, like Belgium, like the United States. The other refugees who are men, who are strong, will act like the refugees in Uganda acted in moving back and fighting for the liberation of Rwanda. Kagame was a refugee. Museveni was a refugee. Most liberation leaders have been refugees. Our refugees must understand I care about them, but I'm not interested in exploiting them for any political reason. The alliance between Biafra and Ambazonia does not affect your refugee status. Seseko was not kidnapped because of this alliance. The Bengis were not kidnapped because of this alliance. The other 47 from Taraba were not kidnapped because of this alliance. It, they were all kidnapped because there is an alliance between Aso Rock and Vomeka. And we cannot fool ourselves that Nigeria is for us. The evidence is there. We cannot sit and hold an international press conference to play platitude with the same country that has kidnapped our own leaders and transferred them to a murderous regime. Nigeria isn't a friend. Nigerians are our friends, but the Nigerian state isn't. We don't seek to classify them as enemy anyway, but little politicians who jump into our liberation struggle and think that they could establish alliances with little councils in Brazil. Those who think they could hire little lawyers who know nothing about international law to deal on issues of genocide can lecture the Ambazonian governing council and the Ambazonian people about what alliance is relevant for our liberation. They can keep playing their political pundits using refugees for legitimacy, using fighters on the ground to hang banners in honor of them. They will raise the flag as far as I'm concerned. They will sing the anthem as far as I'm concerned. I will provide them with guns. I will teach them with the technology on how to protect villages from the marauding attacks of Yaoundé. I will inspire them to know the kind of country that they are fighting to build. I will let them understand the stake, what is at stake for them. My job as a leader is to establish for ourselves and the next generation, a country for Ambazonia. The Ambazonian people will be able to have the right as they had in the fifties to decide their political destiny. But for the past five years, 
when we declared our right to self-defense as defined under Article 20, Paragraphs 1 to 4 of the African Charter on Human and People's Right, as we declared our right as enshrined in the, in the Charter of the United Nations, they attacked it. They rejected it. When I moved into Dadi to inspire our forces, move all the commanders who now control different blocks to come and train and give them the political ideology. They called them Changshu boys. They said I was a movie maker. Now they have joined self-defense. They want to kill the godfather of self-defense. They want to kill the same commanders who have defended blocks, who have inspired people, who have raised our flag, who have given their bodies a shield for our vulnerable mothers and fathers. When we talked about internationalization, building communities in different countries, they transformed those communities into partisan blocks that have all crumbled. When we were on the ground seizing villages and seizing blocks and defending them, raising our flag and giving Ambazonia hope and pride, they came in with bribery and corruption. Fast forward, the same Biafra Alliance they attacked today. The next few years, they will want to take it over and kill those who built it from scratch. My people, you are free. You are not free because of Ayaba. You are free because of our collective effort as a people to reject the tyranny of a country that we provided, provided them refugee status. Let these people know those they call Makizas in the 60s who fought for Cameroon's independence were fighting from Ambazonia. There are five pillars for your liberation. They have attacked all of those five pillars. Leadership. That is focus, determined. That doesn't blink even in the face of death. They've attacked it. Their own leader who goes to court and declared himself as an Ambazonian is declared a traitor. Their own leader who wears his outfit in reflection of the Ambazonian flag is impeached. They will sit in hotels and dine with the enemy. They call themselves patriots. When their leader was kidnapped and everyone was running away from Nigeria, the empty head from Lebialem was running into Nigeria to hold a press conference. They attacked the very foundation of your independence, leadership. The second foundation is a strategy. You can never be free without a strategy. Liberation struggle is not hit and run. It's not adjusting all the time. You must have a plan, a master plan that defines who your enemy is, defines your short-term short objectives. Be able to identify your indicators to know whether you are making progress or not. The strategy has been unpeckable, has been the best defined in modern times. Where from across the 13 states, uh, people could rise up whether for Ayaba, against Ayaba, but for Ambazonia. They rose up like one people. They fought, died on the same spot that commanders were taken down. The next general rose to defend that block. The strategy of making sure our territory is ungovernable. The strategy to ensure that we punish the enemy with bankruptcy. The strategy of changing the calculation of the enemy, of altering actors' orientation from Yaoundé, as reflected in the World Bank report, is undeniably the best. Of ensuring that Cameroon does not adjudicate our struggle from Yaoundé, that is internationalized, that will change the battlefield in diplomacy. As we're struggling to build the the rays of diplomacy, ensuring that we had muscles on the ground, that we had a multilateral system that is not a replication of 1961. 
They were flying to Switzerland. The next strategy is the people. You can never be free without the people. Never. They demoralize our people. They use television sets to demoralize our people, to divide our war of liberation. They attack the optimism that we are engineering our people so that they give up. Dozens of them resign and join the enemy as enablers so that our people lose faith. They attack the foundation upon which we fight. The next foundation for liberation is funding. They ensure that we could not have the funds. They attack our town halls. They blackmail us to the extent that our people lost hope in us. They attack us from morning to the night, 24 hours. So we don't have the funds. It was given to them. They embezzle it, demoralizing our people. Completely, more than $2 million, enough guns to take, including Douala, to raise the flag over the port of Douala. My fellow people, I'm not here to make you feel pity about yourself. I really come to give you these analogies. I don't want you to like me, but I want you to understand me. For five years, you've been lied to. Your patriots have been blackmailed. Those who killed Thomas Sankara thought they killed a man. They killed the dream for Burkina Faso. Those who murdered Patrice Lumumba thought they killed the man. They mortgaged the freedom of the Democratic Republic of Congo more than 60 years down the road. Defend your patriots. Stand for the truth. We fight for your liberation. We've put in place a clear-cut plan. Our people must not suffer during the liberation period. When you say no school, you must have an alternative. We have provided community schools. It's indigenous, organized by our communities, controlled by our communities, using the best curriculum of education, produced by our best minds. We do not say don't go to school and we offer you nothing as an alternative. When we said we reject their own political governors, we reject their army, we gave you the Ambazonian Defense Forces. When we said we reject their school, we gave you the community school. It is up to you to protect their independence, to strengthen the institutions that stand for you. It is up to you. You stand at the precipice to fall in the hands of seasoned manipulators or to stand with patriots. In 1960, Cameroon was given that choice between the nationalists who fought for true independence and the Aijos who came in as hijackers. Cameroonians choose hijackers. 60 years after, here they are. My fellow Ambazonians, we stand with our refugees. We will work to move vulnerable refugees out of Biafra land. The same way we move Akwanga and more than 43 other refugees from Nigeria. We can do it. Our refugees there don't need food. They don't need handouts. They need hope. They need to see us determined to end the tyranny in our country so they can return. We can provide support to the vulnerable ones. 
but we cannot use them as political pawns for our own political agenda. We cannot turn our prisoners in Kondengi, in Douala, in Bamenda as political pawns for our own agenda, holding flags and singing our names in the same way CPDM, CPDM morons chanted for the Hitler that has ruled them for more than 60 years. I asked Nigeria to release my friend Mazi Namdi Kano. I remind all Ambazonians that on Monday, the 9th, and I'd like to remind you, the ghost towns instituted by the consortium started on the 9th. That instituted by Biafra is starting on the 9th. It was never discussed, just a coincidence. On Monday is ghost town in Biafra land. I ask all of our people in Biafra land to respect the ghost town as the Biafrans fight for their own freedom, for the liberation of their leader. We use this day on Mondays, every Mondays in Ambazonia in honor of the sacrifices of our own political prisoners. We use this day to send a powerful message to the international community there will be no repeat of 1961. We use Mondays as ghost towns to honor those who have laid their lives for Ambazonia, to tell the families that are mourning that their children didn't die in vain. Amazonia, you are free. Your destiny is in your hands. You have a choice to hand it to hijackers, elites who've ruled you for more than 60 years with nothing to show for or take control of your destiny. Shape your institutions according to your needs. Build a country where the ordinary person has control, where the future is certain, where embezzlers, politically corrupt and financially corrupt politicians belong to jail and not to parliament. I ask you to support Bui, our fledgling community schools in Bui, in Momo, in Lebialem, and across different states in Amazonia. We will make you proud. You saw the kids sang on 1st October 2020. Expect something extremely very huge, 2021. God bless you all. God bless Amazonia. And God bless our people. Wow. 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 I told you guys. He is 